Seven minutes now past the hour. We know group projects and hands-on learning include two things that we have been avoiding these days. Multiple people handling objects. But what will happen to classes when folks go back into the classrooms? And there are some classes that require both. Music classes can be what gets kids excited to go to school and all new this morning. Renata DiGorio brings us a look at the challenges and solutions facing music education. Musicians and the music industry are suffering, but educators are determined to make sure that music education does not suffer and people are getting creative. This is a picture where my parents have been giving strings lessons on their porch in another state, but here in Duval, private porch lessons won't be an option next week as students return to school. <laughs> that question because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's really overwhelming. That question, the impact music education has had on his and his students' lives. This is Brian Griffin, orchestra teacher at Douglas Anderson and River City Youth Orchestra. His orchestra is about to look different. No more stand partners. Do all schools require wind players to be at least 10 feet away from each other, everyone else six. Masks required when students can't distance, but not when they're actively performing. Griffin has 30 kids to a room. So we're going to have to have their instruments stored in different parts of the room so that they don't all go in there elbow to elbow. What about the long-term impacts on music education? It can be the first to go in budget cuts. He remembers what a superintendent said years ago. We really appreciate the fact that he said that we weren't going to gut the art. I'm blessed and thankful to have a job where I can do what I love to do. and. Um, and I, I just want other kids to have that opportunity. And I see kids doing that every day in my program. I'm Renata DiGregorio, First Coast News on your side.